Hi, everybody. God is really blessing us. And uh, in um, May 28th, uh, 25th to 28th, we're going to have a retreat, HTC retreat in Washington, D.C. And uh, if anybody wants to go, the church will support uh, $500 per person. Family. Oh, per family. Okay. <laughs> Okay, and then I think it costs about $170 uh, per person when you get there for four days of room and boards. And, uh, and it's, it's really amazing because God is really, there are like free church over there uh, joining us. And God is blessing us. We, get, we have a lot of great miracles. Uh, one of the amazing miracles, I think is one of the most amazing miracles, is this, this girl named Paige. She is nine years old and she stopped her brain wave, she cannot breathe, and she's completely pronounced death for three months. And uh, the doctor is telling the mom to, you know, just take care of the business to get her, you know, get her buried and, and things. But then we went over there and prayed for her for about five minutes, and then she started healing. And April 10th, we were two days from now, she'd be well enough to go home. So it, it shocks the entire hospital. And of course, we have a, God giving us a uh, TV station, which very, very few churches will have a TV station. Uh, it's called ACM America, no, Alliances of Culture Media. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a TV station. So it's, it's working for HGM. And also, we have like uh, some kingdom projects Martin knows about. And it's amazing, you know. Uh, we have investor for 500 million U.S. dollars. That's a lot of money. And it's only beginning. And all this thing is given to us. So hopefully, uh, we're going to have a good time in retreat when we all gather together and show, show them what we got. So the VP had to get ready because I've been giving them like, mighty words about you guys. Uh, and then, uh, and also, they have a really beautiful band led by a Korean pastor called Pastor Moon. He's like really, really good. It's like totally like mind-blowing blowing good. So he, he leads a professional band, right? And uh, they have American Idols people singing in it. Um, not, the, not the number one American Idols, but American Idols like contestant, contestant like 40. I mean, um, um, those are really, really good people. So they have a very beautiful uh, worship team, and uh, the churches are gathering together. We have tons of miracles, and then God is going to make us pretty rich soon. And I really see it. So, and I have sent out one of these Navia Johnson on a seal chat. Uh, Navia Johnson is one of the teachers that is pre preaching about men, men child and about end times. And not, I don't buy everything that he says, but at least the first 40 minutes is a very good glimpse of about the man-child because he's speaking almost like the same as, because when he's talking about the man-child being caught up to heaven, it's not the rapture. It has nothing to do with the rapture. It is about, you know, God is taking the man-child up to groom him. And he's talking, also talking about a man, uh, the Antichrist. The Antichrist is being groomed, but the man-child is also being groomed. Uh, that, that part I don't, quite un I don't quite agree because I believe the Antichrist is not a person, it's a system at the end time. So anyway, but any of you that want to listen to it, you should go and listen to it. Uh, Navi Johnson, uh, it's, it's on Siu Chat. Because it's talking about new eras coming. And in this new era, there is tons of miracles because the like, glory of God returned back to his church. And one of the miracles he was talking about is how uh, people really have no food, but they can, like, like Jesus breaking the bread, you know, they create, create food to feed people, literally, like from nothing. And actually, I heard about that in the Christian realm. Um, there's a couple of churches around. I think one of them is in Singapore or something. They have literally have bread that can keep on breaking and feed multitude our one single loaf of bread, right? It's just like Jesus' time. And actually, it's not just them. Because Blazing Star is basically a supernatural team 
that we are the group that is chosen for this. So uh, we have a lot of miracles in our, in our group. It's like a, <clears throat> Crystal, she can uh, like shift from place, like a, not a shape shifter, but she's shifting from place to place, her body, without moving, right? Like inside the bed and out of the bed, you know? Uh, she still has to work on her, her clothing because it's like Terminator. When you transfer to other places, you go there, lick it, right? So it's not so useful if you go to some place naked. Uh, she's still working on that. And then, uh, and wings have a really wonderful miracles because she supposedly cannot give birth. And this is what the doctor said and medical you know, fact. But now she have a wonderful baby. You're going to see her uh, later on in a, in a communion. And then uh, Priscilla last week, right, has this, she was eating lunch of spaghetti at work, you know, and she signed her name on her, her lunch box. And she ate some, and uh, ate some portion, not finished it, so she put it back in the fridge. Second day, she took up and ate some, and then they have some left over, so she just throw it away. But she still leave the box in the, in the fridge. And then the next day, the spaghetti is all full again. Like, like starting to have new spaghetti, right, from nothing. So, um, I mean, we have all these fun things, and we have a lot of miracles, like uh, healing miracles. And we have a lot of uh, being caught up to heaven miracles and all those things. But basically, our focus is not in miracles. Can, a lot of people can have miracles. The focus is the new era is coming. And we've been talking about this man-child era. And some of the kids were saying that, okay, I'm not... I'm not an adult, and I don't quite get your theology, uh, so I'm kid. I'm too young. I, I'm not part of it. So why do you keep talking about this stuff? So I want to let you guys know, this is an era where God is going to use everyone. Young or old, big or small, God is using it. And we, have, we are having a, um, a dinner conversation with Pastor Zhang. We have a lot of Korean friends lately. Because in HCCM, there's a Korean church that joined us. And then Vivian is going to a Korean seminary, you know, working with a whole bunch of Korean. And then we have this Jong coming back to us. This Jong is also a Korean. But the good thing is he knows how to speak Mandarin, and he knows how to speak English. Right? So he's good in all three languages. So, um, so when we talk about John, he was telling us that there are young people doing miracles healing. Young little kid, like, like five years old, ten years old kid, they are filled with the powers of God and they start healing people. They start prophesying to people and they perform miracles. And he was saying, why not? The Holy Spirit can come upon anybody he wants to. So uh, one of the youngest, I think is three years old, three years old, barely walked, is in, uh, is in uh, I think it's in China. And this three years old kid, every time doing worship, he would just be there very standing there very seriously and he would start speaking in tongue and he would be crying doing worship. It's kind of scary, huh? Three years old kid, speaking in tongue, crying, <laughs> and then he would prophesizing and he can heal the sick, you know? So God is using young people. The point is, do you have, you know, that kind of submission to him? Do you have that kind of commitment? Let's put it this way. It's not about how much you want to love God. It's do you want to commit your life for the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God is rising. And I like what Naree Johnson was saying, that the man child is basically a remnant of people that God rise up in the end time to smite, to defeat the kingdom of the beast. You know? So, do you guys have this kind of urge to be somebody great in the spiritual realm. And all it takes is not like going to school, studying your degree. All it takes is a submission heart that always coming to God and wants to do His will and want to learn His will. And forget about the past of failure that you have, that you might have. Uh, it's a brand new beginning. Okay, it's Everything starts from scratch. It's almost like a, a basketball game. 
It doesn't matter what you win or how many games you lost. This is a new game, okay? And if you want to do good, you're just following the coach and you play with all your heart and the Holy Spirit can use every single one. Okay, this I want you to get these things because it's a new era. It takes a new mentality to do it. That old traditional mindset will not do it. You just say, I just want to mind my own business and love God and going to church. That won't do it. You need to have this kind of new mindset. The Lord, I want to be used by you in this era. And what can I do? Show me. And I'm willing to submit. I'm willing to follow. I'm willing to learn. You know, I'm willing to be somebody. And uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us. And also, we have also sent out, I also sent out one of these uh, news about the dragons falling down. Because we're talking about Kim Jong-un. If he can denuke quietly, which is the best. Nobody has to die. But the way that the fact that he is denuking, denuking, is that the word for it? De denuking. How I say it? Anyway, you get the idea. If the reason that he can denuke is basically because it's somewhat a giving up. Tau Hong. It's, it's basically like surrender. Because that is something he's really proud of. He, he's something that he, he brags about. right? But all of a sudden, he's willing to denuke. So basically, it's a surrender. And I don't think he's surrendering to Trump. I don't think Trump has that power. I think in somehow the Spirit of the Lord puts, put that thought into him and make him fear that if he doesn't denuke, he's going to die. And basically, probably that will what happened. But then he would drag a lot of people to die with him, right? To have a big world war free before he died. So this is like the best way the dragon comes down and God is giving it to us. And uh, we are very happy about it. And uh, the meeting is going to be held in May. And that's about us. almost the same time that we're having our retreat. We can totally celebrate how the dragon coming down with a uh, banana split or whatever. Okay. <laughs> so today, um, in this new era, the Bible said you cannot use the old wine skin to, to hold a new wine because the new wine is powerful. The, the old wine skin is lacking of its elasti elex elasticity. So the new wine goes in, we'll, we'll destroy it. Right? So in this new era, God is going to powerfully come upon uh, his people. And therefore, we have to have this new mindset. We have to have this new wine skin. We cannot follow the old tradition. We have to have the new mindset, especially for young people. Do not think that, okay, I'm too young. You know, they are just talking about somebody like man child. Well, there's no way I can do it, you know. Everybody is, is not exclusive. Many are called, but few are chosen. But if you don't try your best, you won't have a chance to be chosen. That I can guarantee you. Okay? Even though you try your best, you may not be chosen, but that is up to God, right? We have to understand that part. But if we have the right word, the revelation is right. Like what God is giving us, the free part of theology and all this, this amazing millennium message. If the message is right and you're following in it, you will catch the anointing. And you will catch the blessing, okay? It's very important. So I'm going to start talking giving you guys one verse is from Ecclesiastic chapter 10, verse 1. As, as dead flies gives perfume a bad smell, so a little folly, folly outweighs wisdom and honor. What a shame, huh? A beautiful jar of perfume just because there are some fly, dead flies in it. The Bible said it ruins the smell and then just a little bit of stupidity. You know, it doesn't take a lot, right? A little folly, which means a little bit of stupid, stupidity, action, or wording, will outweigh wisdom and honor. So forget about working on the wisdom part. Let's just work on not being stupid. Because if you can have wisdom and honor, and you have great anointing, like a jar of perfume, you know, that God really treasure, and all of a sudden you have these flies, a stupidity in you. It ruins it all, right? So, 
this story, this this uh, message is about a new era for the chosen, and it's an era for the wise. And in Chinese, is Ji Jie Wai Wang, meaning it's a game. Whoever is the smartest will win. The smartest one will be the king. The smartest one will rule. So he's talking about wisdom. And when we talk about wisdom, uh, there is four step. And I'm going to talk about. If you follow this four step, you will be very, very smart. Okay, you will be smart enough. Let's put it this way. And if you don't follow this four step, uh, it's very hard for you to be smart enough. And you don't have to talk about man child for especially for young people, because one of these four step is talking about knowledge. You do need the knowledge of the word to rise to the ultimate. So just skip that part because that part you you will not be able to do it. You won't have that much knowledge of God. But if you have the another three parts, you can still become the mighty warriors of God, and you still reign. You can still perform miracles. You can still possess great superpower. You know, there's a lot of movie lately coming out. They're talking about human being uh, bump into some radioactive stuff or whatever happened happened to them, and they have this supernatural power. And there's a lot of movie about little little kids uh, gifted with moving things and killing things and seeing things. Remember? Do you guys watch movie? Huh? You guys don't watch a movie. You just play video game. <laughs> so that I mean. There's a lot of movie, literally a lot of movie talking about people possessing a supernatural power, okay? And uh, there's this all fantasy stuff. It's not real. You're not gonna, no matter how many movie you watch, you're not gonna get any supernatural power. But right here, okay, we have people moving in supernatural power. We're not just talking about. It, we're living it. And basically, uh, the the blazing star is. A, uh, a special chosen team for God to manifest His full spectrum of gifts, supernatural power. So we are, you know, we're having a ball here. And uh, the VPs are having a lot of supernatural power, which I just mentioned. And they are really like a supernatural team, except Nancy. She's just supernaturally beautiful. No, that's true. Her gift is supernaturally beautiful. Carrying the mercy of God, okay, but everybody else is supernatural. Uh, Mandy is the only one that always doubt about herself. Because yesterday she was giving me a, uh, some hard question. It's like you know, you always say that I am doing well and I have this supernatural power, but I don't feel it. And I said that's even better. You don't have to feel it, right? And I was explaining to her, you know, my gift as a watcher, which is very few. I don't know how many retro watcher God has on this earth. Basically, a watcher is a man-child groomer. This is what Navi Johnson, Navi Johnson was talking about. Basically, that's, he was talking about me. A man-child groomer. Why are you guys laughing? Because a watcher always seems like he's bragging about himself, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything comes back. No, but the point is, I want you, to get, you guys to get the facts straight. The, the watcher is given, given a certain kind of uh, gift, and it's called a measurement. So I can measure your anointing. I can measure your power. I have to have this gauge. And if I have doubt, I will go up to heaven and I have the access to the heavenly library and I can check out. Oh, they're talking about heavenly library too. So I can check out your, how, how his wing is doing, you know, because she seems doing pretty bad, but when I go up there, well, she's okay. She's like, the, the report up there is even more accurate. But even living day to day, I can sense your, I have this gauge built in me. Yeah, that was before all this thing happened. I, I was arguing with God, if you do not give me this, I'm not going to lead any people because I don't know what they're doing and I don't know how good they're doing. I can't even grade what they're doing. So God kind of like down low or installed, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. He, he installed that part in me so I can gauge your spirituality. Okay. So therefore, the good thing is, if I don't say you're bad, you're okay. Okay. But if I say you're bad, there's something you really have to fix up. Because I, I usually, it's very merciful. And uh, so, why I'm talking about this? Oh, Mandy was saying, talk about So I was telling her, 
that when her power comes, you guys will see it. Because I am responsible to make sure the VP all stands out with supernatural power that the world has never seen. And I'm not the one guaranteeing it. God is guaranteeing it. So don't worry. They're doing really, really good. Yeah. Of course, they, they're not perfect yet, but they're doing really good. And actually, I was really moved yesterday to bought all VP a little tiny gift. It's only cost about 13 bucks. Each, 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 each. <laughs> so I'm going to give that gift to all VP on, uh, in the communion later. You guys may like it. You guys may not like it. You can, may think it's very silly, but I think it's very really good. But, uh, and we save one for, uh, for Mindy. Yeah. But anyway, let's see if you guys would like it or not. It's very unique <laughs> and it's mystical. <laughs> it's mystical. Okay. So let's talk about this fourth step to make you super smart. Okay. Let's skip that part about knowledge. Especially, I don't think any of you is so you know, serious about knowledge of God, knowledge of the Word of God, right? So I'm going to skip, I'm going to preach three part out of four. But if you can do this three part, you will be smart enough. You don't have to be super, super smart, but you'll be smart enough to capture the anointing of this era, okay? So young and old, you can all listen. The first one is all about worldliness. Because worldliness is what God trained his prophet. John the Baptist comes out from the worldliness. Elijah comes out from the worldliness. Isaiah comes out from the worldliness. Jesus did not come out. Moses comes out from the worldliness. Uh, you know, and a lot of modern days prophets, they really have worldliness time. And uh, the first thing about the worldliness is unsettlement. It is a life or a situation where you be like just tossing around. You're not settled. You're not settled in the wilderness because there's no home. You cannot really build yourself a mansion, right? It, it, it's, it's like you feel like you are wandering. You're just moving on. It's just like the issue. Like in 40 years in wilderness, it's pretty hard. I mean, you can enjoy a couple of days of camping, but 40 days of camping, oh my God, you know. Of 40 years of camping is horrible, right? Yeah, there's no restaurant, <laughs> no movie. Actually, those lives are very boring. I don't think I can survive. <laughs> even though nobody kills me, I may not survive. <laughs> uh, but they even have war. Not only that, they don't have entertainment. They have war. I guess war is the entertainment. But anyway... In worldliness life, it's basically a situation God is just, just put you in trial. You're not comfortable there, and you're not settled. And in Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 11, it's talking about Moab. Moab. Moab has been at rest from youth, like wine left on its dregs. Nor pearl from one jar to another, she has not gone into exile. So she tastes as she did, and her aroma is unchanged. What is it is, if you want to do good wines, you let the wine settle, and you pour it into a different jar, and you let it settle for a long, long time, and then you pour it. So basically, the wine will be pouring and pouring, so they will get clear and clear and becomes very, very pure, right? So that's how you get good wine. And finally, then you restore it somewhere else. So... What he is saying that there was this person, Moab, and God is saying this is no good because Moab was too comfortable. Since his youth, he was just like sitting there like a sitting duck. Not sitting duck, it means something else. Sitting duck means you're sitting there to wait to be shot, right? So he's just sitting there like idling, like doing nothing. And if you have a life like that, you know, you can praise God for it, but also it's not too good. Because if you are too stable, you lack of challenge. You're going through this job that is constantly makes you like a robot, you know. So uh, unless you're a spiritual master, like a mystical master, if you're trying to collect money on the toll, be toll bridge, I was always thinking about 
that would be a great job for a mystical master because I can collect toe beach. I don't have to think too much, right? It's a routine thing. All the car pass by, and then some of them use fast track. You don't even have to collect money. But people coming through just collecting money. And then if you're a spiritual mystical master, you can just oh, focus to God. You can be constantly up in heaven and do your job. Now, if you have a job that is so busy like uh, Priscilla, it's very hard to be caught up to heaven because you have to use your mind, right? But she got caught up anyway. That's why she's super good. So the point is, if you have a job at a tow boot, you either get smarter or you get dumber. Because that is the kind of job that puts you in the routine. And people like routine. And that's why wilderness is a place where you don't have a routine. You know, you just have to depend on God and strive. And every day you don't know what, was, what is going to happen, right? So uh, I was talking about this. Human being is, is a creature of, uh, of habit. You have certain habit. You like routine. You like excitement, but you don't want to be constantly under excitement. And you want good excitement. You don't want bad excitement, right? So you just like to live a comfortable life and having a good time. And Jerry said, after a good dinner, I can play my video game for four hours. And then I get a good sleep, right? And then next day, I can play another couple hours more, right? So this is like a good routine. You just, you, you live in it and you feel good, right? And all of a sudden, one day, your mom said, hey, tonight we cannot, you cannot play. Right now, we have to go to see somebody. And then drag you out, and then you don't have your iPad. And that, that kind of breaks your routine, and it's kind of like painful. It's like a torture, right? So we are pre creature of routine, and we have certain kind of habit. But a prophetic dimension is like wind. Jesus was saying that those that are born of the Spirit is floating like a wind. You don't know where they come from. You don't know where they're going. It's like, it's like blowing as a wind. It's very free. Nothing traps them. Nothing, nothing schedules them. Right? They're kind of unpredictable, impulsive, and they, because they're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. They're ready at any given time to do what the Lord told them. And it is something that the devil cannot trap you. Because if you have a schedule, if you have certain kind of habit, the devil can always trap you. So there was this very powerful Kung Fu master from Wing Chun. Wing Chun master. This is a, new, it's a real history story in, in Wing, Chun, Wing Chun Kung Fu history. So this guy is really powerful. And he's a lot of enemies want to get him. But nobody can really get him because he is so good. He can beat up tons of people. So they were thinking, how can we get him? Oh, they find out that he loved the yam cha. And he always loved to go up to the second floor of yam cha. And he always sit on that reserved seat for Jiang Sifu, Yang Sifu, you know. So he goes up there and he yam cha every morning. And people respect him. And he was having a good time every morning at that time. 8 o'clock or, or 9 o'clock, he will be there sitting on the table in the exact same seat, yam cha. And you can see for his enemy, he was thinking that, hey, that's a good chance. Let's do something on where he's going to yam cha tomorrow, okay? So basically, they put all this chain underneath and they, they cut out that block where, they, where he's sitting. So as he was yam cha, they pulled the line and the whole, whole table area, you know, plus a little bit more, fall down to the first floor. And under there, there was all these kind of animal traps, you know, and his leg was caught in one of the animal traps. What do you call that, those things? Huh? Yeah. There's a name for it. It's, it's a metal claw thing, you know? You step on a bear trap. So his leg got on it. And then have a heavy chain that ties up onto the floor. So basically he, only, he can circle around a little bit, right? And he have no weapons because he was yam cha. And he falls down. And he was hurt. And there was things that hurt him, you know, because they are sore and things like this. He was kind of stabbed, hurt. And then there's 70 guys comes in with axes and try to, to kill him, right? Now, he really put his Kung Fu into test now. Because normally, there's no way you can beat this guy. But now, because he's trapped, he's hurt, he's wounded, he falls down, and he was like all wounded. So finally, the story is, he killed 60 some guys out of the 70, and he died. It is in the Kung Fu history. So, 
you can see that it is not so wise not to yam cha, <laughs> but not so wise to have a habit. Not so wise to have something that you must enjoy. Like, if somebody wants to kill Jared, somebody will put some kind of poison as they kill the brother of Kim Jong Un. You know, you put it onto the laptop or the iPad, and when Jared is holding his iPad, is playing it, he will die. Right? Because his iPad is his habit. It's something that he will touch, he will use. So, actually, my point is God put his prophet into the wilderness, into a state of unsettlement, to keep on just shaking them, shaking them. Unlike a, a Moab, you know, where, the, where the wine is selling, God is just keep on pouring. Don't you feel like some of the people? I don't know who, are, who are, like some people always have to move their house, right? I guess it hates it too, right? Every time when you move a house, it's horrible, right? But God will move you and move you and move you and move you. Like I was being moved like 50 times in my life when I was doing childhood, 50 times. You know, I hate it. It's like I know everywhere is not my home. But this is basically a wilderness setting. It's an unsettlement that constantly mold you and break you, and you just won't feel comfortable, but your spirit will become very, very flexible and, and almost like formless. You're not set in a hard shell that this is me, you know, I am jet in the box. You know, you are really free like a wind. Okay? So this is the first lesson. The second lesson is a wilderness is a place where you cannot get what you want. And some of you, I'm pretty sure, experience that. In the wilderness is the place you don't have anything to count on, anybody could count on. It's totally a place where you can only count on God. Have any youngster have this kind of experience? Jared may have some. There are times that you feel like you cannot count on your mom, you cannot count on your dad. The only person you can count on is your iPad. But the thing is, if you can switch that around a little bit, at that moment when you cannot count on anybody, you can count on God. Now that is a prophetic word in this. And it's not easy. Because in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 4, while Jezebel was killing off the Lord's prophets, Obadiah has taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, fifty in each, and has supplied them with food and water. Now see, this fifty prophet being protected in a cave. And in a cave, it's like you don't have any entertainment. I'm pretty sure there's no TV, no electricity, no bathroom, no toilet, right? And no privacy, you're li living with 50, 49 people. And every day you're just depending on somebody to bring you food and water. But that is how God always treat his prophet. God always put their prophet, his prophet, into a world in a situation where they cannot count on anything. There's no one to count on. They can't even count on themselves. They have to count and depend on God. It's forced you to count on God. So Vivian was giving me a very, very funny question, very cute question two days ago on Friday. She was saying that, oh, I'm lacking this, I'm lacking that. And I'm saying, that, Vivian, I think that is called a wilderness where you cannot count on anybody but count on God. And then she gave me back a very cute reply saying that, I thought my wilderness is over. Because when she come over, right, she thought the wilderness is on Hong Kong. So I'm saving this answer for her in this sermon. And also, I preach in the Chinese sermon. The wilderness will follow you all your life. If you think that the wilderness have an ending period, you just don't quite understand the wilderness system. Wilderness is something that God will, from time to time, give to you, so that you will be able to count on no one but Him. Yeah, I want to preach. Not preach. I'm going to share one of these experiences that everybody was laughing. But I think it's very, 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 uh, very fitting 
is after the last DC trip, I was coming back on just regular, we, we take those, those plane, I, I'm just taking business, not business, economy. economy. And there was this one huge white dude sitting right next to me. And his arm was like pressing against my left shoulder. And there was this one huge Chinese dude sitting right next to me, very fat. And his, his arm is press, pressing me. So I was sitting like that for six hours in a very uncomfortable seat. And then this Chinese guy is having some really serious stinking problem. Uh, I know in Chinese it's called chao wu, but I don't know in English. It's a very, very serious problem. It's like medically, you know, it, it needs to be medically treated because it's really, really like potent, okay? And, and it was, I was right next, it's like, oh my God. And then not only that, he was having stomach problem. He was farting from the beginning to the end of the trip. And I don't even know why can somebody fart so much, like for six hour long, you know? So I was standing there. And then when I was landing, Mandy was asking me, do you need to buy you some food, bring you some food? I said, uh, I don't care about the food, but give me some orange juice or Coke or something, because I need something to wash down my throat. Because from breathing, breathing into six hours of, of fart or whatever, I can literally taste Taste the it's in my it's in my throat. It's not in my nostrils, it's in my throat. It was so bad, I need something to wash it down. And I don't even dare to drink water in the entire airplane trip because I don't want to puke. Because I was feeling to puke. Is you know. And then anyway. So that is my wilderness. This is where I get I, I get my sermon from. And I was sitting on that chair thinking to God. This is what you measure to be. It's almost like a fart torturing. That because we just knock off the teeth of the devil. Because in Washington, D.C., we are preaching dynamic sermons and we have performed miracles. So it, the devil really hates it. And every time when you do something like this, you always get some kind of punch coming back. So, and of course, the same day that my mom was getting robbed, right? So I can tell that the devil is losing his power, is acting more like a snake instead of a dragon. Because now he have to, you know, pick on my my little old mom, or pick on little old woman, and give me fart torturing. You know, is this the, the kind of devil? This doesn't seem like a devil punch to me. It seems like a snake punch to me. So I was taking that really, really like I know this is something that I had to endure, and I was enduring, and I was just focusing on God, and I never focused on God so hard at that time, because if I can, if I let myself drift. To the circumstances, I will like puke, and I won't be able to take it. My butt was hurting, everything was hurting, and I was focusing on God. This is how mystical master comes about. He's like, <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes you get caught up so much in heaven, and as a little kid, it's because I hate the surroundings so much. I don't want this world. I want something else. That's why the Lord lift me up in this heaven. So I was doing that, you know. And then afterward, as people are leaving. Right, even the plane stop. They still holding. Wow, I'm almost done. I think I think I'm just going to preach one. I'm not going to preach the second one. Anyway, the plane stop, and people are waiting there, standing there. The plane, for whatever reason, was standing there for like 10, 15 minutes. It was even more time before I can get rid of that guy. So finally, the doors open and people are moving out, and I was moving out. When I get into the airport, right, I get out of the airplane. I was breathing that fresh air, <laughs> wonderful, sweet fragrance of fresh air. And I was literally lipping in joy. It's like so happy, like praising God. It's like hallelujah. It's like, it's like, it's like a, a, a blind man seeing. It is like a... Yeah, you're like a crippled man walking. I literally had that feeling. I, I was literally like, I feel like I'm so like, I'm like jumping. And why I'm so happy? because of the fresh air. So, if you haven't had that far torture, you didn't go through the far torture, you're breathing fresh air every single minute and you just take it for granted. Right, you know that the air right now is very sweet. And that is the kind of air that I was pleading and begging for. And just a breath of fresh air 
will bring up so much praise and worship for me. It is amazing. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, that's why sometimes you have to put us in hell so that you can enjoy the heavenly setting. Do you know that? Now, anybody, anybody young people still want to be a prophet? <laughs> this is the test for prophet. It's a must. It's a course that the prophet, all prophet must go through. It's the wilderness. It's God will put you through tough time. Tough time. So when your, your, your burden is being released, you praise him like, oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And then another tough time comes, boom. And then you struggle, struggle to it. And then it's lifted and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Right? This kind of unsettlement, this is crisis. Storm one after another is like a shaking in your life. It's constant. But then actually you will, oh, this is the second point. You will learn some kind of submission, some kind of humility that the world can never teach you. You have to learn it through this hard way. And God really wants to save you the trouble to lessen your pain if you submit. Trust me, if you submit, that is the least of the pain you have to go through. If you don't submit, it's just going to get harder. And you think that it cannot get worse, it will get worse. Unless God doesn't want you. But if God wants to use you, He will break you. He will find a way to break you. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't work in 20 years, He will take 40 years. If it doesn't work 40 years, it will take 60 years. Amen. He will eventually break your will so you can submit to the Spirit. And when the Spirit comes, the, the moving of the Spirit is very fast. If you think with your logical mind, you will miss it. But you see some people are just flowing with the Spirit, like flowing in the wind, blowing in the wind. Because this is a submission spirit through the wilderness. It's serious Kung Fu. If you, if you put it in the, in the matter of Kung Fu, this is serious spiritual Kung Fu. So at the end, I want to show you one of these really cute things. It's about a mom. Uh, don't, don't listen to what it written. Because what is written is not true. But basically, it's a mom giving this girl an onion, right? But this girl is very submissive. She didn't complain, but she keep eating the onion. Have you ever tried eating onion? Raw? <laughs> okay, I'm showing you this frame because I want to have you relate to the work of God. Sometime God will just do that to you. You got to be prepared for it. And I don't know if this girl is stupid or what. But she's very submissive, right? She did not throw that away. She just keep on eating whatever her mom gave him. And, but the thing is, in life, in spiritual life, this is how the worldliness is. That's how the feeling is. Worldliness is God going to give you a situation, give you a, a test, a trial. You really cannot get out of it. You're like trapped in there with the seat belt also. <laughs> and you just have to ride it through until the situation is over. And when you're riding it, you just have to submit. You have to know that you are human and He is God. And it's His will above your will. You just have to hang on to it. Okay? If you get fed up and you get frustrated, you leave God, you know, like some people who forsake God, and say, I can't handle it anymore. I don't want to go to church anymore. And then you just be forever lost. But if you can induce it, then you can become a prophetic person. And a prophetic person are the true wise people in the kingdom of God. Because prophetic means understanding the will of God. So if you understand the will of God, you are truly prophetic. 
right? While all the other people are wondering what the will of God is, you can tell them, you can guide them what is the will of God. And that wisdom comes through the wilderness. So after all this said, any young, young, young people still want to be a prophet? Still have the courage to be a prophet? Scare now. Okay. But God have mercy. You know, God have mercy. Uh, the harder, the higher you want to rise in the prophetic realm, the harder the lesson will be. So you don't have to shoot for the, shoot for the highest, highest. Okay. There are only some ignorant people who will shoot for the highest. Like Priscilla <laughs> and I, when we were young, we was have this pray. This is the pray for the people that shoot for the highest. Say, Lord, do not care about how I feel. Just give it to me. Just hang the cross to me. And don't care about what I feel. Just do your will on me. Now, this is called a high-level prayer. It's very uh, ignorant, and it will get us into where we are now. And now, if I, if I want to make a second choice to go back, will I make the same call? I don't think so. I would not want to do it. Uh, seriously, I would not want to make the same call because it's really painful. Um, so this is the way you should pray for your wilderness. Lord, I really want to be a prophet. I really want to go through some wilderness trial or lesson, but make it, take it easy on me because I'm allergic to pain. I'm allergic to boredom. I'm allergic to frustration. I'm allergic to anxiety. I'm allergic to sickness. I'm allergic to poverty. Yeah, that's the way I pray now. <laughs> okay, okay, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there's a lot of wonderful heavenly blessing. It's like a banquet. So much good food, so much good anointing, powerful, powerful gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the way to receive it is that we have to deny ourselves. And there's no better way to deny ourselves than the lesson of the wilderness. So Lord, we do have the desire to be great. We do have the desire to please you. But Lord, we also ask for your mercy and grace to take it easy on us all. And I know that this is your will. You will take it easy on HCC. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.